I know from you know the young Aboriginal people that I know in North Queensland and, and elsewhere and you know um, I have a Aboriginal goddaughter who grew up in Sydney and Western New South Wales who's you know 26 now who I've known since she was you know one year old and I know the impact that it has particularly on young people she can walk into a shopping centre and she will immediately be followed by the security guard um, she will be often the last person served in a shop. Um, she will, when she's with me, uh, automatically authority figures will address all the comments to me, even if she's the subject of um, the discussion. So, you know, you go to a doctor with her, and the doctor will talk to me about her issues rather than vice versa, you know, rather than directing to her. And I know that the impact this has on young people, and um, I think if you're not being, ex if you're not experienced with it, if you're not in tune with it, you can be completely oblivious to that sort of quite subtle systemic racism. There's the other sort of racism, you know, the name calling, the the you know the the really nasty, overt form of racism, which I think most people are aware of, and most people are pretty offended by. And I, you know, I think that's that ten percent of the population I think that um, are um, you know, pretty prone to that sort of stuff. But the much less of a much more dangerous racism I think is that um, is that much more subtle form of racism that I think a lot of people who are, if you like, in the um, you know, members of the of a culturally dominant um, group are completely unaware of. You know, so when I go into a shop in North Queensland and notice that the you know the, the black skinned people are the last served, I would imagine that many of the other white shop shoppers would be completely unaware of that. It wouldn't even enter their minds, and perhaps even the shop assistant who's um, engaging this behaviour is also quite unaware of it. It's a it's a almost like a um, you know an innate response. Um, so racism is very destructive. It undermines people's confidence and self-esteem. I think it destroys um, it destroys the um, the um, um, potential for lots and lots of people. Uh, I think it detracts people from some of the real issues. So it's very easy to for governments to um, stir up a little bit of antagonism towards a minority group thereby ref deflecting sort of anger and frustration in the mainstream away from government's decisions that might have caused it to you know the latest uh, the latest demonized um, group coming in you know the, the indo-chinese back in the back in the 80s you know the, the lebanese and i guess in the um, late 80s and the 90s and the afghans iraqis today so we less think about the, um, you know, the, the stupid decisions that governments are making, the, um, the sorts of uh, inequalities in our society, and start looking at people who we can identify because they talk funny or they wear funny hats or they have a different colour skin to ours or they practise a different religion to ours. And ultimately, I want to see a society that is just you know, beyond racism as well, but economically just as well, and I think racism has used, been used over the um, you know the millennia um, by uh, ruling classes to uh, deflect uh, the populace's questioning of their own uh, ability and capacity again you know to uh, to deflect it onto a minority group.